My name is Brenda and I'm 21 years old. I am a photographer, but I also model. Other than that, I'm really passionate about film and uh, I'd like to become a cinematographer, hopefully one day. So that's what I do, that's, that's what I'm working on. I, I go back to India pretty much every year and um, every time I go, it's a different experience, obviously, because I'm getting older and it's like going back to your parents for like Thanksgiving or Christmas, you know. It's the same kind of like mentality, but at the same time, like, there's so much more to it. I pretty much like love like all Indian traditions, like all aspects of it. Every single thing that you do in a ritual, for example, has meaning. Everything that you're not doing has meaning too. And and there's just like a vast amount of like information. You can just like learn. And every time I go back, there's so much learning that happens. I really enjoy participating in Indian festivals, like Holi is a favorite one. And I like that we have so many festivals because we have so many gods, so it's like every festival like is honoring like a different god or a different part of yourself, essentially. And um, it's nice to see families are like constantly like interacting with each other and you know being close and like enjoying themselves through like food and dance and and fashion, all these things, but also like paying homage to our culture and our traditions and our ancestors. When I see the cultural appropriation of like, Indian fashion, definitely like rubs me a weird way. The bindi is something that's uh, appropriated a lot. You can like love a culture and like love certain traditions from afar. If you're, you know, a white woman and you're married to an Indian person, then like go for it. You know, that's that's like totally fine. You've integrated yourself into that culture and that society. There's some like cool things that like everyone can participate in, like henna for example. But then I do have a problem when I see like successful white women that are profiting off of being henna artists. That form of art is intrinsically ours, so why not just like give your money to someone that's Indian that is also a henna artist. It's taking a little longer for non-Indians to realize that it's equally not okay. Like Beyonce in like a music video where she was like wearing like a full langa, which is like a traditional really fancy like wedding kind of attire. And from that to like even just like dance moves, like I see a lot of like choreographers that like integrate like hand mudras which are closely related to our gods back to like mythology and like if you have no knowledge of that if you didn't grow up knowing what you know it all means then again like it feels inauthentic and the fact that you're like making money off of it is like is almost fraudulent the voice of um, women in india is like growing as well recently there are some states which had like a ban on like feminine products and a bunch of women just got together and went out in the streets and protested. Gay rights, I get my period like once a month and I have to deal with that. I mean, I wish we had like a day off specifically for periods because cramps are insane. It's something that's more talked about. I kind of see myself more so gender fluid. Sometimes I wake up and I feel more feminine and then other times I wake up and I'm like, wow, I'm feeling really masculine. As like a brown, a femme identifying, I wish like my my sexuality wouldn't come into play like into the picture as often as it does It's like hard to overlook characteristics of gender. It's it's something that as a society like we still have to figure out